Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing peak integration, and this is part of our larger series related to fundamentals of analytical chemistry. And so the goal of this series is to demonstrate how we can implement many of these techniques using Python and update many of our approaches with newer tools. And so in this case, I have a data set called peak. And if we illustrate what this looks like, you see that we have two peaks, uh, nothing particularly fancy, but now I want to build a way to integrate these two peaks. Well, first identify where the peaks are and then integrate them. We've already done the first part in which we know how to find peaks using the find peaks method from the scipy.signal module. And so let's just do that here. We have two outputs, peak and info. If we look at peaks, you see that we have the index value of where the peak apexes are located or the local maxima. And if you look at this info component, we have a dictionary of sort of the metadata of the peak, the information about the peak related to the prominence, which is an estimation of this peak height, sort of a, uh, an estimation of signal to noise. We also have the left base and right base, and so this will tell us where the local minima are, sort of a parameter for the, the stop and start points at this peak, as well as several other components. And so with this information here, we can use this to figure out where the peaks are and how wide they are. And then I'll illustrate which method we'll use from NumPy to actually perform the integration. So if we look at the left base and right base, you see we have two components. And this lets us know that we have two peaks, peak one and peak two. And so let's build a way to integrate based on peak one, in which we'll use the first value from left base and the first value from right base. So to do this, let's start off with the method we're going to use, which is mp.trap. So this is from the NumPy module. As you can see, it takes y value, this is the intensity data, and then an x data, which is optional, but if you want to define a limit for the peak, this is necessary. And so this is where this information on the left and right base come in. And so what we'll do is take our information from peak, and we can pass it in, and you see that if we do this, we get an area of 105, and that's because we are actually now looking at the integration of this entire area. But now I want to demonstrate how we can identify where these peaks are located and just pass the specific peak information for one of these peaks and then replicate that for the second peak. And so let's just indicate we're looking at peak one, which would be the first peak here and write some code to specify where that's located and then pass that to trap Z. And so let's define where the low range is. And so we'll set low equal to info and info again is this dictionary. We're going to look at left base. And then from left basis, we want the first value, which will be zero. So we'll copy this and do the same thing for high or upper. Let's call it upper and lower. That's where upper and lower bound. And now we want right basis. If we comment this out and look at what we have, you see that lower is the first index and upper will be the 10th index, the 10th value here, and that is what defines this range. Now we can pass this information into trap Z and perform our trapezoidal integration using that information. Simply, if we now create a bound around lower to upper, so this is just slicing a string, so now if we provide this bound, you see we have integration equal to 38.5. And this is for peak one. And so now let's make a variable called peak number. And let's set it equal to one. And since we know the index, how the indexing works in Python, we'll set peak number minus one. And so when we have a value, when we want the first peak, we'll get zero. When we want the second peak, we'll get one. And we'll do the same thing here. And so we're here for peak two. I'll copy this here just so you can see how easy we can replicate this. But in reality, we simply just update this peak number. And you see now we're integrating this second peak here, which is significantly taller. In the next video, I demonstrate how we can actually illustrate where this integration is happening. And that will help us to understand if we have the proper bounds. So if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.